Hello, Squirrel Squad. My lights, I haven't gone out to get more batteries yet again to see if something's wrong with my little mechanism or not. Uh, we're still in chapter five. Yeah. And I'm just going to pick up and go. And let's see. The last thing I read was... I'll go back a paragraph. If the Lawrences had been what Joe called prim and pokey, she would not have got on at all, for such people always made her shy and awkward. But finding them free and easy, she was so. Her, she was free and easy herself and made a good impression when they rose. She proposed to go, but Laurie said he had something more to show her and took her away to the conservatory, which had been lighted for her benefit. It seemed quite fairy tale like to Joe as she went up and down the walks and joined the blooming walls on either side. The soft light, the damp, sweet air, the wonderful vines and trees that hung above her, while her new friend cut the finest flowers till his hands were full. Then he tied them up, saying, with the happy look Joe liked to see, Please give these to your mother and tell her I like the medicine she sent me very much. They found Mr. Lawrence standing before the fire in the great drawing room, but Joe's attention was entirely absorbed by a grand piano, which stood open. Do you play? She asked, turning to Laurie with a respectful expression. Sometimes, he answered modestly. Please do now. I want to hear it so I can tell Beth. Won't you first? Don't know how. Too stupid to learn. But I love music dearly. So Laurie played and Joe listened with her nose lux luxuriously buried in ah, heliotrope. I guess that's a type of plant. And tea roses. Her respect and regard for the Lawrence boy increased very much, for he played remarkably well and didn't put on any airs. She wished Beth could hear him, but she did not say so, only praised him till he was quite abashed, and his grandfather came to the rescue. That will do, that will do, young lady. Too many sugar plums are not good for him. <laughs> his music isn't bad, but I hope he will do as well, and more important things. Going? Well, I'm much obliged to you and hope you'll come again. My respects to your mother. Good night, Dr. Joe. He shook hands kindly, but looked as if something did not please him. When they got into the hall, Joe asked Laurie if she had said anything amiss. He shook his head. No, it was me. He don't like to hear me play. Why not? I'll tell you some day. John is going home with you as I can't. No need of that. I ain't a young lady. And it's only a step. Take care of yourself, won't you? Yes, but you will come again, I hope. If you promise to come and see us after you're well. I will. Good night, Laurie. Good night, Joe. Good night. When all the afternoon's adventures had been told, the family felt inclined to go visiting in a body, for each found something very attractive in the big house on the other side of the hedge. Mrs. March wanted to talk of her father with the old man who had not forgotten him. Meg longed to walk in the conservatory, Beth sighed for the grand piano, and Amy was eager to see the fine pictures and statues. Mother, why didn't Mr. Lawrence like to have Laurie play? asked Joe, who was who was of an inquiring disposition. I'm not sure, but I think it was because his son, Laurie's father, married an Italian lady, a musician which displeased the old man who's very proud. The lady was good and lovely and accomplished, but he did not like her and never saw his son after he married. They both died when Laurie was a little child, and then his grandfather took him home. 
I fancy the boy who was born in Italy is not very strong, and the old man is afraid of losing him, which makes him so careful. Laurie comes naturally by his love of music, for he is like his mother, and I dare say his grandfather fears that he may want to be a musician. At any rate, his skill reminds him of the woman he did not like. And so he glowered, as Joe said. Dear me, how romantic, exclaimed Meg. How silly, said Joe. Let him be a musician if he wants to, and not plague his life out sending him to college when he hates to go. That's why he has such handsome black eyes and pretty manners, I suppose. Italians are always nice, said Meg, who was a little sentimental. What do you know about his eyes and his manners? You never spoke to him hardly, cried Joe, who was not sentimental. I saw him at the party. And what you tell shows that he knows how to behave. That was a nice little speech about the medicine Mother sent him. He meant the blamange, I suppose. And I did look that up. And Michelle also looked it up. I looked it up mainly to make sure I was pronouncing it correctly, and it is a type of dessert. Let's see. How stupid you are, child. He must mean you, of course. Did he? Said Joe. opened her eyes as if it never occurred to her before. I never saw such a girl. You don't know a compliment when you get it, said Meg, with the air of a young lady who knew all about the matter. I think they are great nonsense, and I thank you not to be silly and spoil my fun. Laurie's a nice boy, and I like him. And I won't have any sentimental stuff about compliments and such rubbish. We'll all be good to him because he hasn't got any mother, and he may come over and see us, mayn't he, Mar Marmy? Yes, Joe, your little friend is very welcome, and I hope Meg will remember that children should be children as long as they can. I don't call myself a child, and I'm not in my teens yet, observed Amy. What do you say, Beth? I was thinking about our pilgrim's progress, answered Beth, who had not heard a word. How we got out of the slough and through the wicked gate by resolving to be good and up the steep hill by trying... And that maybe the house over there full of splendid things is going to be our palace beautiful. We have got to get by the lions first, said Joe, as if she rather liked the prospect. And that is all of chapter five. And I'm sorry. I was going to read some of six, but I really would like to try and keep chapters together. And I am just worn out today for some reason. I've been feeling better with the iron after having gotten some more in my system. Isn't this lovely? This is the bookmark that Miss uh, Sandy Sutton from Australia. Oh, she sent me the nicest goodies. She sent this. She sent a furls crochet hook, which I've been using already. I was so tickled that I was already using that same size on something. And, uh, golly, that beautiful yarn. And what else? Oh, this tea towel. Oh, and the holder she made for the hook. I've got to look at this some more. I've got to figure out where to put all my stuff. Everybody said I'm, <laughs> I'm outgrowing my corner. This is the name up top of the place where Miss Sandy lives and where the star is is exactly where she is. Isn't that neat? Right on the coast, right? I bet it's lovely there. I have to find out if she uh, makes videos. I hope she does or she will because that 
I bet it is a beautiful place. I've not been to Australia, but I wouldn't mind going one day. How about you junior squirrels? Would you like to go to Australia? Would y'all like to see Opie? Opie says, bye-bye. Be sweet and don't be ugly. Until tomorrow. Oh, I forgot I'm on the senior squirrel. <laughs> well, you senior squirrels can be like the juniors. I should have done this with the juniors. Didn't think of it. I just looked at it. <laughs> I think I need to go to bed, y'all. What do you think? I love y'all. I know it wasn't much tonight, but I am just woe out. See y'all tomorrow, live at five.